road safety workshop is primarily geared towards the transferring of knowledge and skills that will enable youth participants to accurately, accurately diagnose safety issues associated with vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians and cyclists, work zones, and to guide in the selection of appropriate actions and countermeasures to address those issues. Just recently, in our printed dailies, the headlines captured, and I quote, pedocyclists killed on Suzdike Linden Highway, unquote, woman killed in suspected hit and run, quote and unquote, speeding car kills bushlot lad, quote and unquote. From those accidents, three persons lost their lives, and they were all young people just under the age of 25. And we're, and we're from the most vulnerable categories of road users. It is noteworthy that if those persons had not suffered death due to the lack of reckless road users, they would have been alive today, enjoying what life has to offer. The government of Guyana, through various government ministries and agencies over the years, has taken the mantle in addressing and curbing the callous reality of road traffic accidents. However, many initiatives, such as engineering from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, were and continue to be explored in order to adequately wrestle and respond to the inevitable reality of traffic accidents. Allow me to place on record that massive road rehabilitation works are designed in a manner to incorporate safety mechanisms geared towards improving safety of all road users. At the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, we have been doing our part to address the five risks. These are speed, drink driving, helmets, seat belts and child restraints in road safety. Some of our actions include ensuring proper and adequate road signage, road markings to ensure road users are guided properly, construction of sidewalks, installation of raised pavement markers, installation of street lights, installation of traffic lights, road maintenance and resurfacing of damaged roads, placement of speed humps, participation in traffic management to improve mobility of road users, promotion of road safety through education. We are now planning to start construction of overpass road, an overpass bridge, sorry, to improve safety of pedestrians on our busy highways. During my presentation at last year's launching of Road Safety Month in November, I stated em 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 <clears throat> I stated emphatically that, and I quote, sorry, the culture of road users has to change to one of safe culture, unquote. Drivers need to take more responsibility for the safety of their passengers and themselves. When you travel to developed countries and you use the transport services, you immediately notice the difference in safety culture. Passengers are properly seat belted. Children seat belts and safety restraints are in place. Drivers are more cautious now I am not saying in those countries you don't have delinquent drivers, but they have a higher form of safety culture. In Guyana, we need to improve on our road safety culture. Road users need to think safety first, unquote. One will agree that road safety cannot be achieved in isolation, and therefore, 
we must all collectively contribute to its enhancement. It's very good to see that here in Guyana it's been taken seriously and uh, a proof of that is that we've seen the participants of the council attending our events throughout the years now. Another very positive sign is to see the presence of police here in attendance. Police is uh, often seen, overseen as a, as a key factor in the, improve, in the improvement of uh, road safety. So uh, we are very happy you're all here and I, we hope it's gonna be able to help. Now the minister also mentioned um, the population that's most vulnerable to fatalities under 25 years old. That's, uh, that's the future of the country. That's your future workforce, that's your future leaders, that's a big part of your current workforce. So if that's a population that it's being disseminated by road, road carnage, then we have a problem. It's not just a matter of uh, road infrastructure, it's a matter of, uh, to an extent, public safety. It's a matter of, uh, you know, social, social awareness in general. Unfortunately, a lot of times, uh, authorities tend to accelerate decisions only once somebody famous dies on our road or is involved in an accident. That's when it usually gets the attention of the media, of the general public. Uh, I'm aware that uh, just a couple of days ago, Guyana, correct me if I'm wrong, won a first class title, cricket. If I'm correct, the fast bowler right there was uh, Mr. Kimo Paul, who if I'm correct, is uh, 19 years old. Mr. Paul, statistically, is in the segment of the society which is most vulnerable to die in our roads. Now, what makes Mr. Paul different from just regular Joe Smith walking outside? Probably the notoriety, probably the exposure, the media, the fact that most of us know his name in the room, even somebody coming from Chile. But let's not wait for Kimo Paul to be in a road accident for us to take immediate action on things that, there are some things that are going to take a little longer for us to change. Uh, as the minister pointed out, there's a safety awareness culture that needs to change and improve. But there are some things, however, that we can change in the near future, almost immediate, really. Uh, some of it has to do with regulation. Some of it has to do with the uh, road infrastructure adjustments that need to be made. Come on, we come to measures. You, you, you have to pass it, so you have to incorporate some cost factor. That's where we get the figure the, the PM 60,000 for a fatal accident. And that is the guidance case. In places like the United States, Switzerland, and those countries, it's in excess of a million US dollars. Um, for other developing and developed countries, it, it is a little different. Um, if you should do an assessment now of the, the value for life and the, and the value for all categories of accidents, I'm certain we would be targeting a sum of about 200,000 US dollars per fatal accident. Um, we had, it was calculated at 7,005 US for minor accidents and serious accidents, and 2,000 US for damage accidents. So those computations were done since 2004, so um, we're talking in excess of 10 years. Uh, this table presents um, what the accidents, rate accidents would have been for the last 10 years, starting from 2007. And if you look at 2007, you'll see that we had 169 fatal accidents. Um, that resulted in 207 fatalities. Um, for the last, for the years following that, um, but of course, with significant support from the United Police Force, when they had really massive enforcement drive. Um, for the years following 2007, I think it was, let's say about six years after that, we were averaging just about 150 deaths per year, which showed significant um, improvement in what it was. And of course, it tells that you know, we, can, we can do so much more to, to improve our roads. The categories of road use scale. Um, for all the all years, you would see that pedestrians um, make up a significant or the largest percentage of those deaths. And then cyclists in total, and those numbers exceeded 
60% in many cases of the total accidents for those years. Um, and you go to look at the bottom of the table, um, I just did a, a small snippet for 2014 and 2016 to show the, the, the gender of those scale. And you see our men, my, we are slaughtering men. I guess men are the ones who are always exposed to the danger in every situation. Because we go to war, we run our roads. I don't know, but it's good that we're protecting our women. Um, so we need to do more um, to, to reduce these deaths. And of course, um, you look around your room here, what is that men? Where are the women? You don't have much women who are, who are, who are involved. I guess they're in the background. We have our ministers leading from the front. Um, we have the IEB rep. Um, we have the Ministry has received significant, not only the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, but even the Ministry of National Security, has received over the years significant support from the IEB. And I must say thanks for that. I'm looking forward to all the assistance we can get in the future. Uh, which we are currently trying to negotiate for some more, but uh, I know we're going to succeed. The road traffic crashes are one of the top causes of death in Guyana. That's also what we recognized when we were preparing the plan. We understand that one of, it is, is the one of the number one cause of death amongst persons between five years to 14 years old. And the number two, two cause of death amongst age 15 to 24. That, that information we got from the Guyana National Road Safety Strategy 2013-2020 and also the global road traffic crashes take lives of 1.3 million persons every year and injured are 20 to 50 million per more. So if you look at the statistics and it's telling us that we have 50 persons die on the road to date, you have to multiply that sometimes by 50. That's the amount of persons that you have injured on the roadways. And it's, very, it's a very serious problem. And if we do not, and according to, the, to, the, um, according to our research here, and the Global Status Report is telling us, every year, 20 to 50 million more people, over 90% of road traffic deaths and injuries occur mostly in low and middle income countries, such as Guyana, which have only which have only 48% of the world's registered vehicles. That's a report also came out from the World Health Organization 2012. Nearly 46% of those dying on, our, on the world's road are vulnerable road users. The pedestrians, the cyclists, like Kesta mentioned before, and motorists. In addition to grief and suffering, in addition to the grief and the suffering they cause, road traffic, crashes result in considerable economic loss, as Kester showed you before in his presentation. And these, where we can, you can do your own research. You don't have to believe what the Road Safety Council is saying to you. You can do your research. You're going to go to the Global Status Report. You're going to go to the, um, the United Nations Globe, um, Global Plan for the Decade of Action 2011-2020. And you're going to see all these, all these reports. And the reason I'm giving you these reports here today is to show you the seriousness that is happening in a, around the world, and not only around the world, in our country. It is very serious. And after we had a decade of action come out, and countries like Guyana is not meeting the decade of action, even though it's already five years has passed, we have not started to meet the decade of action's target. And there was this high-level meeting that was called because a lot of countries have not met the decade of action. Guyana is one of them. And the high-level meeting that was called in Brasilia, and that is one of the, um, that is where they asked that we use the, the team, together we can save lives. And we have come up with a plan of action through attending the, the Brasilia um, conference and knowing that it's a serious, problem and we need to work on our on our part to get all our partners together. Moreover, the Ministry of Public Security concurs the, no, the notion that a well-coordinated and massive collaborative effort amongst all stakeholders is essential to address the road fatalities phenomenon on our roadways. That is why we have all of you here, because it's important. Each and every one of you is a key player in this fight for road safety. 
So don't believe that you're here by accident. You have to play your part. Whether, and we always believe in, I like to do this, I love to do this. We always believe in the PPP, Private-Public Partnership, right? So it's very important. That's why you hear Kesta keep begging, Mrs. McKinnon, and if we had another rep from another bank, we're gonna keep begging, and we're gonna keep asking the private persons to come on board. If you're gonna have a commercial, ensure that your commercial is have a little road safety, buckle up, click it or a ticket, some kind of road safety message. We must partner in this fight to reduce deaths on our roadways.